Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. My name is Abdurrahman and I'm from Britain. I was raised in a non religious secular family. We never discussed Islam, we never discussed any kind of religion. And I came to my own conclusions that there was no God and that science had the answers to everything because that's what I was being taught in school and that's what I was hearing on the TV. Even so, despite coming to my own ideas that there was no God, every once in a while I had the doubt and asked myself, is there a God? Maybe there's a God. Now, going through high school, I was unhappy much of the time because there's a lot of peer pressure at school to conform, to be fashionable, to be popular, to be daring, and so on. And I didn't want to be like that. I, didn't, I saw the popular people were not respecting the teachers, not respecting knowledge. I didn't feel that they were really looking to develop themselves and to really contribute to the world. So I was lonely and being lonely is unhappy, especially as a teenager. In fact, it reached a point about two or three times where I felt that since I had no clear purpose in life, maybe I should end my life. But thanks to God, I didn't do that. As Allah planned it, I had a Muslim friend at high school. And sometimes I would go to his house and he would say, I'm going downstairs to pray. Sometimes I would ask him, why do you pray or how do you pray? And the thing I really appreciate about him is that he was not shy to tell me about his Islam, at least when he was at home. This is very important for Muslims today, because if you don't make an effort to show something of your Islam, you cannot expect anybody to have an interest in Islam or to learn about Islam. Now, after I'd known him for about five years, when we were 16, he decided that I would probably appreciate Islam. So he made an effort to persuade me to learn about it. And for a period of about three weeks, every day he was telling me, you should learn about Islam. It's the religion of truth. There is a life after death. There is a paradise and a hellfire. Allah is the most merciful. He didn't know much of the Quran or the hadith of the Prophet Muhammad, peace and mention of Allah be upon him. He just kept telling me the same points over and over again. And eventually we reached a point one evening as we were walking together and I looked up at the moon and I said to myself, if what he's saying is true, if there really is a life after death, then it would not harm me just to investigate this for myself and come to my own decision. And honestly, from that point onwards, my heart was just open to Islam. And I can remember I began to talk to God and to say, I can't believe that all my life I've never spoken to you, I've never acknowledged you, but now I really believe in you. It was really as simple as that for me. Of course, I took the trouble to learn about Islam as he advised me to do so. And I think also something that was going through my mind at that time was that after death, if there really was another life, then I would not have the luxury to just run away from Allah and do as I pleased. Another thing I should mention about my life before I became Muslim is that around that time, age 16, the nightclub scene was becoming very popular and promoted on TV. So I was really aspiring to reach the age of 18 where I could do as I pleased. I was making music on my computer and I just wanted to get into the club scene to experiment with the drugs and to experiment with girls and so on. I was so close to entering that lifestyle and I often wonder where I would have ended up had I gone into that life. But thanks to God, he saved me from that and gave me Islam. As I mentioned, before I became Muslim, I was interested in science and I felt that science had the answers to all our questions about where we came from and how the universe works. Now, what interested me when I first began to learn about Islam is that actually Islam and science do not contradict at all. And there have been many scientific discoveries which support what is mentioned in the Quran. For example, about embryology or cloud formation or the structure of the earth. So this motivated me to study about Islam, particularly from this scientific aspect. The one thing that really impressed me about my first Muslim friend and his family was their hospitality and the way that they treated me as a guest. And I think that this is very important for Muslims in their interaction with the non-Muslims because if we want to charm them towards Islam and encourage them to learn about Islam, then we have to be aware of something which is that non-Muslims have more information now about Islam than they used to. And they are probably aware that Islam does not allow many of the things which they are accustomed to doing. And this could make them reluctant to learn about Islam. But by treating them well and showing them the very welcoming and uh, the community spirit amongst the Muslims, this I think will help them to embrace Islam. In my case, when I became Muslim, I was very lucky because I did not 
face much conflict at all with my family or with the friends I had at that time. I remember that my father in particular was concerned about the direction I was taking, um, but he was supportive. And I would say that the big challenge really was just to adjust to the Islamic way of life and to learn to submit to Allah. And one of the things that really helped me to do that was to take the attitude that whenever the truth comes to me, when I'm taught something about Islam which is different from what I was doing before, it is not something which is against me, but it is something which is for me because it will bring me closer to God. I would say the main changes that occurred to me after becoming Muslim is that I learned to respect myself more. And over time I came to appreciate the importance of having a healthy diet, having regular exercise, having a healthy mind and a healthy body, keeping good company, taking care of what I hear and see. All of this helped me to become a better Muslim. Of course, I welcome any opportunity to discuss Islam with friends and family or even complete strangers. But the challenge is that sometimes the better you know somebody or the closer you are to them, the harder they find it to accept the truth from you. Now, the response of my father to my telling him about Islam has been positive and I think that the potential is there. He is interested, but he's very busy with the work that he does. Whereas with my mother, who has a lot more time on her hands to reflect and to think, she makes the excuse that she chooses to worship God as she pleases. You see, she acknowledges the existence of a God, but she doesn't want to submit to his rules. And I have yet to find a way to really help her to understand the basic principle that Allah does not prohibit anything except because it's harmful to us. And this is something which, honestly, many of the Muslims and the non-Muslims today are unaware of. They see Islam as a set of restrictive rules which are preventing them from having fun and being free and so on. And in fact, the true freedom and the true happiness comes by submitting to Allah's rules. And we can see the consequences in many societies today where people are ignoring the rules of even Christianity or Judaism, for example. And this is leading to breakup of families and breakup of societies. So, I think the difficulty with my family is the lack of a really good example for them to see how effective Islam is when put into practice. In terms of my efforts to spread the message of Islam, of course I first and foremost try to give a good example myself. Um, also I like to distribute cassette tapes, perhaps interviews of how people became Muslim, or stories of the prophets of Allah and so on. And I also like to discuss with my friends creative ways to spur people's curiosity. For example, leaving a piece of paper with a few questions about life in maybe a phone booth or on a table somewhere so that someone might pick it up and it might just have a few questions which encourage them to learn more about Islam. The current situation in the Muslim world is a sad one. And we see that many of the Muslims are deceived by the un-Islamic ways. But at the same time, with each year, we find more and more people leaving those un-Islamic ways and finding peace and happiness in Islam. The media today portrays a very negative and false impression of Islam. And one cannot help but wonder why that is, when the truth is available for all to see. Now, even at the time of the Prophet Muhammad, peace and mention of Allah be upon him, he faced this challenge. People would describe him as a liar, as a soothsayer, and many people were forced to ignore those claims because his example was so contrary to what was being said about him. So likewise, our response to the media onslaught against Islam today should be to present the best image of Islam that we possibly can. The message that I would like to convey to the Muslims today is that your religion is your flesh and blood. And that's Allah tells us in the Quran what means that He doesn't want harm for us, but rather He wants to purify us and complete His favor upon us so that we may be grateful to Him. And as He also tells us in the Quran what means it is in the remembrance of Allah that the hearts find rest. So I really want to stress that you can never escape from Allah the Most High. So instead of continuously trying to run away from Him and somehow avoid Him, face up to the fact that 
He is not looking to harm you. He just wants you to worship Him so that you can have the honor of seeing His face in the paradise. So please, be prepared for the inevitable meeting with Him. When I began to learn about Islam, I was fortunate to meet many Muslims who were enthusiastic to spread their religion and to give me books and to read and so on. And what impressed me the most about some of the books I was given was their constant reference to the Qur'an and Ahadith of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. There are many books in the world today, but many of them are containing opinions of people or narrations about the Prophet Muhammad, peace and mention of Allah be upon him, which are not correct. Now we come to the story of how I actually took the Shahada and became a Muslim formally. I had been studying Islam for perhaps two or three months and it took me some time to build up the confidence to actually enter Islam formally. Even though I had begun to pray to God and to even fast in Ramadan very early on, but for some reason I never felt quite ready to accept Islam formally. So eventually towards the end of Ramadan I went to the mosque and I invited my Muslim friends to come and be with me at that time. And of course the process of becoming Muslim is very simple. You simply testify that none has the right to be worshipped except Allah and that Muhammad is his slave and messenger. But what happened after that was somebody suggested that I make some, say some prayers for the Muslim world because I had just become Muslim and therefore all of my past sins had been forgiven. But what nobody told me was how to actually conclude the prayer. So I prayed and I prayed some more and I prayed even more than that and I must have included almost every Muslim in my prayers in one way or another. And then I paused because I ran out of things to say and somebody subtly hinted that we conclude this prayer in your name, O Allah. And after that, people were impressed that I had managed to pray for about 40 minutes. It may surprise someone that a boy born in a non-religious family could have an innate love for his Creator. But actually, Allah creates each person initially upon the fitra, or the natural disposition. And then his parents may turn him into, for example, a Jew or a Christian. So the heart always has a desire to worship Allah. And I remember a nice story which is worth mentioning here about a doctor. I think he was in London. And he treated a Muslim patient. So he asked that patient, you seem to be a Muslim who is practicing your religion. I'd like to ask you something about Islam, which he did. And the Muslim took the opportunity to ask him, you are a doctor and you're a very wealthy man. Are you happy? And the doctor replied by saying, well, actually, no, sometimes I'm very depressed. So the Muslim asked him, if you wanted to give comfort to your eyes, what would you do? And he replied by saying that I would look at something attractive. And the Muslim went on to ask him, how would you give comfort to your ears or how would you give comfort to your tongue? So then the Muslim asked him, does it make sense to give comfort to your eyes by listening to something enjoyable? And of course the doctor said no. And the Muslim asked him, does it make sense to give comfort to your tongue by looking at something attractive? And of course the doctor said no. So the Muslim went on to say to him, this is the problem. Your heart will gain comfort by worshipping Allah and giving thanks to Allah and having a connection and a relationship with Allah. But you are depriving your heart of that connection and that is why you're unhappy. The number of women becoming Muslim today is greater than the number of men. And when I first heard this, it surprised me until I mentioned it to a former work colleague who was a Christian. And she explained that in her experience of organizing church activities, women tended to participate more actively than men. So it would seem that women generally tend to be motivated more um, in religious activities, than the men are. However, this is not an excuse for women to be complacent. Now, women can take their tidings in the fact that the Prophet Muhammad, peace and mention of Allah be upon him, also told us that the whole world is a place of provision and the best object of provision in this world is a righteous woman. Last year, for the first time, I had the opportunity to make Umrah, which is the lesser pilgrimage to Mecca. And I had very high expectations of it because of what I'd heard from friends who had the opportunity to go before me. I would say the greatest benefit I got from making the Umrah is that I felt very, very close to God and I felt I could confess everything to Him since I was so close to His house, the Kaaba, 
and I felt completely sincere. I felt that I could confess all of my faults to him and ask him to purify my heart and help me to rectify my ways. Many Muslims today have observed that people who revert to Islam from another religion are more enthusiastic to learn about Islam than those who have been raised in Muslim families. And I believe it was the great Umar ibn al-Khattab who once said that a person cannot truly appreciate Islam unless he has seen jahiliya or pre-Islamic ignorance. Now we should all desire a stronger relationship with Allah. And it starts with dua or prayer. The Prophet Muhammad, peace and mention of Allah be upon him, the dua or the prayer which he would mention most frequently in his home was what could be translated as, O turner of the hearts, turn my heart to your deen. And the Prophet Muhammad, peace and mention of Allah be upon him, was not told to ask Allah for an increase in anything in the Quran, for an increase in anything except knowledge. In addition to prayer, I would advise any Muslim who wants to develop a desire to learn more about Islam to mix with those Muslims who are learning about Islam. Because the Prophet Muhammad, peace and mention of Allah be upon him, told us that a man is upon the religion of his friend. So let him be careful whom he takes as a friend. Life as a Muslim in Britain can be challenging because you are in an environment where you feel like almost everybody is telling you to disobey Allah. Now, having said that, I have to say that I believe there really is a great potential for many British people to become Muslim because they have, among other things, an intelligence to know that what they hear about Islam in the media is not necessarily true. Or it could be that they just ignore the media altogether. And I really stress to all Muslims living in countries like Britain, please don't hide your Islam. Show the best image of Islam that you can. Don't be shy. Tell people that you pray. Tell them about the morals that Muslims have. Let them see the beauty of Islam, because I think that many of them are very close to accepting it. At school in Britain, from what I can remember, we had one or two lessons about religion per week. But what I remember also is that the media in general is regarding religion as completely worthless. So there is a tendency to promote respect for different people's religions. But the message in general is that religion is of no use today. I hope you enjoyed my story, and I hope that I motivated you to learn more about Islam as a way of life. Thank you for listening. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.